This video is brought to you by my awesome Patreon supporters. To help support my work, keep my videos ad-free, and get rewards, follow the link in the description below. You can then select a tier depending on your budget, and every little bit helps. Thank you! What is up guys, Incente here, and I realized that my last couple videos have sort of been Dawn level focused, I'd posted some three Dawn games, because you know when I play games on stream I think I can learn something I post them. Um, but I wanted to try to give the DDK some love uh, in this video. Um, so I wanted to share with you guys a book that got me from about 12Q to 13Q to 9Q, 8Q to SDK basically. It was the book that was responsible for getting over my double digit Q wall. And this was years ago. Um, I was, as I said, a 12, 13K, kind of frustrated. I felt like I had really good positional judgment because I studied a lot of positional openings. That's kind of the case with a lot of Westerners who don't learn the game by just fighting all the time. And I found that my game didn't have any bite. I was sort of timid. When I tried to fight, I would get cut. I would not recognize key shape points. Um, my fighting was not that great and my shapes were not that great. And if you've ever watched my games sort of recently, you know that I see a lot of Tsujis that actually really do end up like winning me games. I can't tell you how many times I've used the Tombstone Tsuji um, in my games. And so really this all started learning these techniques um, was from this book that I'm about to show you right now uh, called Get Strong at Tsuji. So I'm going to sort of explain to you how the book has functioned, how it's set up, and then we're going to take this to the real board and I'm going to show you guys some practice problems. Um, so you guys can see if you like it and see if it'll help make you stronger. And if you do like this book, I have a link for it right in the description below. If you use the link uh, for this book that is in that description and you buy it from that page, then uh, my channel gets supported as well. So if you do find that this has helped you and you want to get this book, um, check out the link in the description below. Um, but let's get into it. So first is probably important to understand, so what is Tsuji, right? Tsuji is using shape moves and attacking moves um, to get the edge in either a local fight or a life and death situation. So it's kind of a rectangles versus squares thing. You use Tsujis in your life and death. So you can't really have life and death without using Tsuji techniques, but not all Tsujis are life and death problems. Some Tsujis are connecting up your groups when one would be weak otherwise. Um, splitting your opponent into two groups, getting a better position, wrapping around your opponent so you make influence. All of these things are to Suji's. Um, and this book is awesome because, like every other book in the Get Strong series, it's completely problem-based and you learn by studying and doing the problems. Problems are structured just like this. You have six problems per page and they are separated into stars, beginner, medium, and then three stars is the most difficult. So when I actually started using this book, I went and I literally just went down the line and for a month straight, I did like 10 problems a day or something. I immediately found a better understanding of shape and the more that I worked on these problems, the more internalized they became. And now I can look at certain shapes, certain life and death problems and just throw a stone down. I barely even need to read. I read once just to confirm, but usually it's as instinctual as playing the monkey jump when you first learn that you're a beginner go player. And you have a lot of problems in here. There are over 500 problems in this book. There's actually 530 problems in this book. Um, so it can take you a long ways to work through, but if you do study it correctly and you put yourself in it and dedicate yourself to it, you will learn so many amazing shape moves and tsujis that you can apply in so many different situations. And these situations are very common. So what level do I think this is right for? Um, I could see this book being beneficial um, anywhere from, I would say 15Q to, I wanna say like 3Q, maybe 15Q to 3Q. I feel like by the time you're a Don, you should know most of these, even though I think every Don player can benefit from really good life and death. Um, and some of these I took, I keep, looking back in this book and still find some that I kind of have to stare at for a few minutes before I figure out what the right answer is. Um, 
So I definitely think there's a high upper limit to the, pe the level of people that can get use out of this book. But I would, wouldn't say that people lower than 15 Q should do it because I think you need to learn nine by nine, get used to 19 by nine. I don't know. I think, I think there's a little bit more experience that can come before you can get the most out of this book. But definitely most DDKs um, can get a huge, I think, power boost by uh, reading this book. So. so enough of me rambling about it. Uh, let's take it to the real board. I'm going to show you guys some examples from this book. We'll do two easies, two mediums, and two hards. I'll give you guys time to guess the move. You can pause the video. Um, and then I'll show you guys the answer and explain to you why. So let's do it. All right, so this is the first problem uh, in the set that I'm going to show you guys uh, for this book, and it is black to move. And the objective is to figure out what the best move for black is to make in this situation. Um, you can pause the video here. I'm gonna give you just a few seconds. You could take a look, think about your options. Um, and I'm gonna go through the answer and the explanation. Okay, so this is our first problem of the set. Now this is in the easy category. So these are uh, the basic problems that this book has in the set. Um, the objective is black to move. And what's the best move for black? Um, specifically, the problem says, white is threatening to cut. How should black defend? So what is the best way for black to defend the cutting point around here? So I'll give you a few minutes. Uh, you can pause the video here if you want to think about the answer. Um, try to think of the continuations as well to evaluate what is the best. Um, and then replay the video and I'll start telling you the answer. Okay, so the initial move that most people would think is simply to connect this way. But this is actually the incorrect move. And I really like this problem because it's not a very cut and dry kill this group or don't kill this group question. It's sort of like, yes, you can connect in multiple different ways, but which way is the best way? Um, this way is not the best way because even though black is connected, white can slide in and take black's corner away. And so black invested all these stones trying to surround a corner that is being heavily reduced. And furthermore, white is beginning to sort of surround black structure here and it does not have eyes yet. We can imagine if Black would try to defend the corner. This is only one eye. White, Black cannot make a living shape here. And Black, Black, Black cannot make two eyes in this position which means that if white ever gets surrounding moves and black isn't careful and black lets the outer wall get surrounded, white can kill this entire group. And so more than just the points, this situation makes black's group much more fragile and black will have to make sure he finds two eyes before he can do anything else. The correct move is to defend this way. Now it's only one space differently, but it makes a world of difference. Here, white can no, cannot cut because black will simply take the stone. So white is forced to maybe probe, but that doesn't really do anything. But white does not have this entrance move anymore. In fact, when white tries, white actually has to be the one to defend white's shape here. And look at how much more room and eye space black has in this situation. So much more eye space, black is no longer worried about dying, does not have to try to make life in the middle of the board, everything is fine. And so this is a really great problem because it's it might have been easy to get the answer, but understanding the implications as to why this is so dangerous uh, is one of the keys to becoming a stronger Go player. Here is problem number two, and Black's two stones here look all but captured. However, there's a way that Black can save them, 
and it's your job to figure out how. So you can pause the video here, and when you unpause, I will be giving you the answer. So I'll show some of the wrong answers first. So this move keeps the black stones alive, but it does not do a good enough job because white ends up being able to make a seki here. After black plays this one, neither side can capture the other side. If white plays here, black will simply play here and capture all those white stones. And if black tries to make a move to capture, white will play here and capture all the black stones. So this is a seki situation in which neither side can actually make a move and they're just stuck in this purgatory for the rest of the game. However, there is a move that will let black take the edge. And that move is the diagonal. This is an extremely sharp move because the one Atari that white has cannot be played because if white plays here, that is a self Atari. Black can play here and capture all of those white stones. Furthermore, white can't simply Atari from this direction because a move here would capture the white stone. White has to make a preparatory move here first. But because white has to waste a move not removing black's liberties, black gets to Atari. White tries to Atari, but by then it's too late. Black can play here and capture all of the white stone. So this diagonal is a very good move, and in many capturing races, trying to remove liberties through a diagonal connection close to the edge of the board gives you the edge that you need to win a capturing race that you wouldn't otherwise be able to win. And once you see this kind of move, you'll see it popping up everywhere. All right, so now we've moved on to the medium level problems. The objective for this is to get black to connect up his stones and give white bad shape. Now, an amateur move might be as... So, uh, this is a very key uh, shape to learn when you're trying to make advanced strategies and go. So take a few minutes, make sure you understand why the move that you're picking is the correct one, and uh, come back and I'll uh, show you how you did. So basic level players, maybe some more amateur players might play this one, but this is really losing out on an opportunity that could give black a huge edge in this fight. This move is the correct move, the Hane here. If you remember, Hane at the head of two stones is already powerful. And with this stone here, it's threatening an extremely sharp series of Atari. Atari. And now white is crunched into this dumpling shape. Black has taken control of the corner of the board. Black can continue on the attack in whatever direction he sees fit, or just leave it and get take care of it later. And white is in a very bad position, invested five stones to take literally no territory, no eyes, and black has the entire corner. And the best part is white does not have any good responses here. If white tries to be a little bit more aggressive, well, this is just an Atari on these two stones, which white has to defend. Now black can extend downwards here. And after another defense, there is no hope for white stones. Black simply has too many liberties. Black is too strong. This is open to the area. This is open to a standard corner. This still doesn't have any eyes yet, and white's position has completely crumbled. If white tries to Atari, this is simply an Atari. And it's going to be very difficult 
for white to try to make eyes in this corner. In fact, it's going to be almost impossible. White can try to get something going. However, after black throws in and white has to defend, all black has to do is play a move like this. Simply Hane. And white is completely dead. So we can see there's really no way for white to fight this shape. So that's why this Hane is such a good move. White has no choice but to cry to connect and allow white to have a comfortable connection. And this works in reverse. Let's say that this was the, the problem and it was black to move. Well, black's best move is to play here because it's still the same shape point. And I guarantee you that you'll get into situations where you have double haunted your opponent's two stones and you're trying to figure out how to crunch them into a dumpling. This is a great, great move. Now, here's the next problem in the set. How can black link up his stones in the corner with their ally on the right? And this is what I love so much about this book is it really shows you how the same shapes can be executed in different situations. If you were paying attention in the last video, you will know the answer to this. Um, but it does take some preparation. So I'm gonna be quiet, you can pause the video, and I will give you the answer. So the correct answer here is to start with this Atari. Starting with this Atari does a very important thing for Black's position. It makes this position similar, very similar, to the last problem that we had done. Making the key point, if you remember the two stones, two stones and the stone over here, the key point for black now is this move and this will allow black to link up the stones because if white tries to fight it, black has this Atari. and this Atari, and that captures the white stones. And this still works. Now if black does not comply, instead threatening to seal this off for good, well, we still have a great move here because the stone is still existing and black can really try to split because this is an Atari. And now this is an Atari. And black doesn't have any other good moves. This turns into the same thing as what we had studied in the previous problem, where black really doesn't have any great options and really can't live in this corner. Sorry, where white really doesn't have any great options. So that last problem really helps us here because it shows us that the key point is this Hane. But with this liberty free, there is not a real way we can link up. Because after this move, black is continually being separated. And because this black stone is an Atari, this loses a lot of its edge. But If we make this exchange first, making sure that that situation is similar to our previous problem, this becomes the key point in the shape and white has no choice but to let black connect. Now we're into the hard category of problems. So you might not be able to get this one, but give it your best shot. Uh, the objective is kind of ambiguous. And that's what I like about some of these problems. It's not completely cut and dry is not just kill this group or make this group live all the time. This says, what is the best way for black to settle his stones in the corner? So you're not trying to kill anything. You're not trying to be unconditionally, you know, very, you're not trying to deal with the very, not a very, you're not trying to kill anything. You're not trying to deal with an abstract shape. You are simply trying to make your stones in the corner be settled 
in the most efficient way possible and in the most advantageous way possible. So I'll give you some time to think about your options and then I'll show you guys uh, the answer. So some things you want to think about when you're thinking about settling your stones is you want to make sure that obviously you're alive, but being able to not be surrounded would be a plus. And so this stone gives you a lot of forcing moves that you can work with. Um, and you can use those to your advantage. So I'm going to go through the correct variation right now. The correct thing you should do is to play here. And this is just goes to show you the power of studying these problems is that I saw that point. That was the first point my eyes looked at. Um, and the sequence that I read out the, for the first time was the correct sequence in this book. So it really goes to show you that with enough practice, you can really get a great sixth sense for these sorts of things. This is an Atari, so white has to extend. Now, obeying our principles of not letting our enemies connect with each other, black has this very sharp splitting move here. Now, this might be dizzying you up a little bit because there's cutting points, there's this, there's that. There's all these black stones everywhere. But the thing is, these are so short in liberties. There's only two liberties right now that black is gonna have a lot of forcing moves in this area. If white tries to execute the Atari, black has actually a lot of options. Black can connect this way, which is an Atari. White connects. Black can Hane against these shapes. And perhaps a stronger way of playing, and perhaps a stronger way of playing, if white Atari is the stone, is to play here. Now you're Atariing this white stone white has to take. But now black can turn right around and Atari those stones again, which means that white is almost forced to make a somewhat sad connection here. Now black can come over the top of these two white stones. Not only is this cutting point defended, but these white stones are extremely, extremely hurt. White will have to back off and guess what we have now? Double Hane on the two stones, which we've already shown in that previous video to be very strong. Even if black doesn't have this Hane, there is tons of other harassing moves. Black is thick and it's facing the center. And so that's very important. You want, don't want your stones to be surrounded if you don't have two eyes yet. You want them to be facing the center. All right, here is the last problem I'll show you, and it's also in the hard category. And this is very, this is a tough capturing race situation. Um, it even stumped me for a little bit. So the objective is black to move, and black needs to try to capture these three stones without his corner getting captured in exchange. So there's one move that does it, and you need to find that move. And also know why that move does it. So you can pause the video. I'll be telling you the answer in three, two, one. Okay, so at first, you might be tempted to play this move. You'd think you would see this shape, you'd think, oh, it almost has an eye. And you would see that takes away liberty from these white stones. However, once white descends here, however, white has this move. Now if black defends, white is Haris and all those black stones are dead. Of course, black could sacrifice these three stones to ensure that these are dead, but, it does, but black does not need to. Um, black can keep his entire corner. This move also doesn't work because once white plays here, which is an Atari, and black fills in, white can play here. Black has to take. And now it's a co for the entire, entire corner. Black can do better than that. Black does not need to make a co for this. 
The key move for this shape is the descent. Descent is a very strong move because it is the only thing that wins black the capturing race because both of these stones end up being short on liberties and never can actually make their Ataris, and I'll show you. Let's say white tries to Atari and black defends. White starts to try to surround black, but black simply plays here. And now white is stuck. White can't give this Atari because black will play here and take these three white stones immediately. White also can't play here because now black will play there and just take the four, the five white stones. This actually, this situation makes white completely paralyzed. White can't actually get enough moves on either side to capture and so black will just eventually play here, take those stones, and be able to keep everything in the entire corner. So this descent is definitely a hard move to see in this situation. But if you, it will definitely help your reading to try to read out those variations. So those are all the problems that I'm going to show you. Again, the title of the book is called Get Strong at Tsuji. And the link is in my channel. It's in the description right below this video. If you're watching this on my website, I also have it in the corresponding article. And I hope that you get some help from it. Um, if you do manage to buy it um, and you buy it through that link, definitely leave a comment, like in the description below. Let me know how well that works for you, how much you're enjoying it, and if it's helping you improve. Um, I hope that all the DDKs and even SDKs out there um, can get a boost in their fighting from this book because it really, really helped me. So with that, I'll leave you guys and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.